Florida State three when it comes to Sunday morning. You know, I, I think for Tennessee, although they were able to do it last year, bounce back and end up having a really successful year, the way they put all their eggs in one basket for this game, everybody's been waiting for this game, and now after losing it, they have an off week before they get ready for Mississippi and Georgia, then Alabama, will they be able to rebound is really going to be key to their season. Quick thought in the other SEC game, LSU and Auburn coming well, up. Well, tonight when you're watching this ball game, watch Robert Baker, the touchdown maker from Auburn, the outside guy, he averages 35 yards every time he catches it. LSU, Auburn, Auburn wins this game tonight because they're playing at home. You cannot beat them at home, especially at prime time. Well, LSU hasn't been able to do it in recent years. That game coming up, we look forward to seeing you afterward. Back now to Mike. Yeah, Chris, 1973, the last time LSU won on the plains of Alabama. Will this Auburn team finally get a touchdown on LSU? It hasn't happened in a couple of years. Some final private moments before our public show. LSU-Auburn coming up next on ESPN.
If you're looking for America's most trusted name in batteries, it should be comforting to know that Die Hard can now be found in over 1,200 additional locations. Western Auto and Parts America. Serious parts. Serious savings. Drive your car with confidence this summer and save $10 on the best Die Hard you can buy. That's right. Now you can get America's most trusted name in batteries, the Die Hard Gold, for just $69.99. Western Auto and Parts America. Serious parts. Serious savings. Well, it has now turned into a very nice evening in Auburn, Alabama. Jordan-Hare Stadium almost filled to capacity as the LSU Tigers have just taken the field. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin, and welcome once again to Saturday Primetime here on ESPN. Looks as though the Florida Gators have taken a giant step as far as the SEC East is concerned. And trust me, the winner of this one tonight will take a giant step in the SEC West, whoever comes away with the victory. For the folks here on the loveliest little city in the plain, hey, they're saying we're getting tired of losing to LSU. In fact, they have not scored a touchdown on the LSU Tigers the last two years. And in fact, the folks from Auburn said last year's loss in Baton Rouge really set their season in a downward spiral. For LSU, are they for real? Are they a force? Are they back? Tonight will be a great test. And Mike Godfrey, they will find out a lot because in this hostile environment in Auburn, Alabama, you always get a test. Primetime players tonight, who are they? Ron, we have several primetime players tonight. For LSU, Kevin Falk, the fine running back, leads the nation in rushing. And for tonight, he has to take the pressure in the running game off of the young quarterback, Herb Tyler, here on the road. First down is a key for LSU. They have to have success. Last year, Falk had just... 29 yards and 20 carries against Auburn. On the other side of the field, Damian Craig, the outstanding Auburn quarterback, the fourth-year junior. He's an outstanding double threat. He can run, he can throw the football, and he gives Auburn the chance to get big plays in this ballgame. Folks, we had a huge rain this afternoon in the Auburn area. Let's go down to the field and visit with Kellen Winslow. Kellen, what's it like down there? Don and Mike, those two and a quarter inches that came here were all between the times of 2.30 and 4.30 p.m. That rain soaked this field, but this field is in great shape considering the traction is going to be a problem tonight on the outside, but not on the inside. The inside of the field is very dry, just a little damp, but on the outside, where Auburn does most of their passing, is going to be an issue. You can see where some of that turf is already torn up from the pregame warm-up. It may be a factor late in the ball game as the turf gets more and more torn up. But besides that, it's a beautiful night for college football. Let's get it on. Okay, I think we'll do just that. These two clubs don't need any win-one for the Gipper Talks when they get together. The weather, 68 degrees. In fact, it's supposed to go down into the 50s. Calm as the wind won't be a factor. The field, as Kellen said, is damp. And the forecast is for clearing conditions. And I mean this crowd is electric. LSU won the toss. They have deferred to the second half. And as you can see, they're on their feet. This is Baker, the speedster, along with Eric Hines Tucker, number 30. Baker. You see his average return on the season. Richie kicks it off. Baker at the goal line. 20. Puts the head down, takes it to the 25, now the 26-yard line. Take a look at the starters for Auburn on offense. Damian Craig, he's off to a wonderful start. He's got McLeod and Fred Beasley, the big tail, back to start the game. The wide receivers, this is a dandy group. Karsten Bailey and Tyrone Goodson. Jesse McCovery, primarily a blocker. He gets a pass every once in a while. And a solid group up front. You know James, Victor Riley, James Kiger at center. Leonard Thomas and Jim Rowe is the right tackle. And the shotgun tries to throw on first down. Gets it out here in the flat and it's McLeod. And he's bumped out of bounds at the 31, so it gives us an opportunity to check the defensive starters. The down four for the LSU Tigers. Williams, Wiley, a very active one. They get Anthony McFarland back tonight. That should prove big, and Kenny Mixon is the right defensive end. Stansberry, Charles Smith, the new starter in the middle tonight, and Pat Rogers, the linebackers. And in the secondary, it is Denard Walker, Greg Hill, Mark Ronan, and Cedric Donaldson. Jumped offside. You can see Craig through the pass immediately. It was Mixon who came across. Doyle, Jack 
Jackson, our referee tonight, and you can see the markoff is going to go against the Tigers. Mike, as we're getting started here, what's your overview on this one? Well, I think when you look at Auburn offensively, the last two years versus LSU, they haven't scored a touchdown, but that's been against two different staffs, two different defensive coordinators, two different schemes, so they need to prove tonight against LSU that they can move the football. Final from Knoxville, 35-29, Florida wins it. So as we said, it looks as though they are off and running and uh, getting a big head start as far as the SEC East. One thing that we did notice, Kellen talked about the weather condition. The special teamers, particularly the sidewinder kickers, had problems with the plant foot, Mike. So I wonder if the coaches, if distant field goals will be something of a question tonight. As McLeod gets the carry, he'll take it for a couple, and it's Pat Rogers who stops in.
Presenting the ultimate tire for your 4x4, the Michelin LTX. Michelin technology gives it a smooth, quiet ride. Yet it's tough enough, Michelin enough, to get you through anything. <sighs> Why not start this morning at McDonald's and... Fill up all this! Without emptying this. Go in for this. Without blowing all of this. Come on in for breakfast here and you'll save this. And this. Mickey D's is as close as this.
been thinking about getting a digital satellite dish. And thinking. And thinking some more. Well, think about this. The people at Radio Shack can answer your questions. Plus, now they've got great deals. Own an RCA brand DSS dish with programming for about a dollar a day plus installation. Up to 200 channels of select movies and sports available on USSB and DirecTV. Think about it. Better yet, stop thinking about it. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers.
Michael Dead. It is the old students' activity building. It is next door to the stadium. David Housel came over to let us know the old students' activities building. And wow, what a. We had an electric start here, but that really has got this crowd kind of with their, their neck on a, on a spindle. The fire department is there. We understand that uh, everybody is safe. So if you've got loved ones here, don't, don't be worried. The spot goes over right tackle, it takes it out to the 21. Brumbaugh stops it. Ron, the reason first down is so important for LSU is you've got a young quarterback. Even though he's 5 and 0 as a starter, Herb Tyler, you don't, do not want to get him into long yardage situations tonight. Second and third and long because you force the turnovers that uh, Auburn is so used to doing on defense. So you want to keep him in third and short success on first down. It is third down now. And they need to take the ball to the 27-yard line to hold on to the football. Bray finally came over to make the tackle. Another good call by Morris Watts, who's the offensive coordinator. He does not want to put Herb Tyler in some tough situations early, so you give the draw to Kevin Falk, you invite the rush up, and then you break the tailback inside him. And you can see the cutting ability to Kevin Falk. He is really an impressive running back. Well, you can't arm tackle him. No. It goes without saying. He and will make the miss. With it. Right, or he, is, he is off. That's 11 yards in the carry. But most importantly, as Mike said, it moves the chain. But it's stop and go. Looking for Foster up the near side. Overthrown. And in the backfield, Brumball was all over Herb Tyler after he threw the ball. And that's a safe play call because even if it's picked off, it's like a punt for you. So you get Herb Tyler a chance to air one out. And you also get the corners off your wide receivers a little bit. Now you know we're going to go deep on you. So that may open up a little bit of short hitch games, quick outs for Herb Tyler. If you just joined us, six and a half minutes to play in this uh, first quarter. LSU, no score. Auburn, no score.
of a throw. Wanted Mealy out of the backfield, and now they got third and long. That was an interesting defense by Auburn, and uh, the run has hurt them so far in the first quarter. So what the adjustment that Auburn has now is to load up the tight inside. Wherever David LaFleur will line up, they're going to load that side up defensively to try to take away the run, figuring that most of the running game is going to be behind their outstanding tight end, David LaFleur, number 47. Terry Bowden pacing on the sideline. Third down conversions tonight. The Yellow Key Tigers are two of three.
at the corner on those last two plays, you figure something's happened. Either they're manhandling those defensive ends or they are holding. But Fred Beasley's been open on the toss sweep to get, be able to get around the corner. Foul was holding by the offense. Still second down. Penalty from the spot of the foul. So from the spot, and they have taken it now inside the nine-yard line.
first quarter. And as they change ends of the field, it is Auburn nothing and LSU nothing.
Sean Maker. Of the two touchdown catches he had against Ole Miss last week, his feet were almost as high as the defensive back's waist, certainly to the thigh. I mean, he is a great leaper to go with the speed. And we're glad to see that he's up and coming off on his own power. So the situation. Early going, back the first minute of the second quarter. Auburn nothing, LSU nothing, but the Auburn Tigers threatening tonight. This is the deepest penetration by either team.
to have traveled here from Baton Rouge as Holmes will kick it off. This is Neely. All the way out to the 36-yard line. The scoring drive following that 27-yard return.
first down as Chris Beard caught it and then took a pretty good pop. Kellen Winslow, let's check with you quickly. Well, you guys are talking about LaFleur. I think I know a little bit about playing tight end. I played it for a couple of months in high school. But LaFleur is quite a talent. The one thing he's going to have to work on is getting in and out of the break. He's a little gingerly right now on this type of turf because it is kind of slippery. And at 6'7", that's a lot of body to move. Yeah, that's for sure. Last week, Kellen, he had a night, or two weeks ago, he had a nice catch against Houston, but also fumbled and turned it over at a critical time in the ball game. Back into the boundary, they run with Cleveland. Antoine Nolan, the true freshman out of Sharpsburg, Georgia, from that right corner spot, is there to make the hit. And this is what you have to do if you're Auburn. You've got to get... situations where you can run and pass. You've got to make him throw the football. He looks like he's settling down a little bit here on the road, though. He's had some early success. Chris Leonardo said that the biggest thing that he's got to learn to do, and that is to mix his play.
Tackle Tech. Duke Georgia Tech. Thursday at 8. Only on ESPN. And now for tonight's Burger King students of the game. From LSU putter Chad Kessler. He's a microbiology major. A 3-9 average. And from Auburn, Tackle Jim Rowe. He was in graduate school of business. Majoring in business with a 3-0. Burger King recognizes scholar athletes through its $1 million scholarship program by donating $100,000 per week in the name of the players whose achievements go beyond the field and into the classroom.
penetration up the field and not allow them in the field. Force them to a field goal, not a touchdown. The ball is right on the two, maybe just inside of it. Third down. Damien 
Craig's going to make a good draw fake. That holds the linebacker. See, no one's in the middle of the field because the linebackers are held with a draw fake. Carson Bailey over the middle. First down and Damian Craig needs something like that, Ron. He's been off the mark. He's, he's been high, wide, all over the place. Well, you can see his arm strength on that throw. Good for 19 yards.
defensive coaches and get the instructions from uh, Carl Reese. Meanwhile, Coach Tommy Bowden, the offensive coordinator, his charges are still on the sideline talking with his brother Terry Bowden. The other possibility down here is a quarterback draw. Okay, that they're going to widen people out on you to try to keep Damian Craig pinned in. You always have the quarterback draw. Now look for a quick snap here. Remember, this is what they did many times last year as they come out to line up. No, they're going to go ahead and get set. Three wide receivers to the bottom of your screen.
burnt their timeouts, Ron, and not being not able to stop the clock. Well, coming up at halftime, the GMAC halftime report. The top stories: Florida and Tennessee, Notre Dame against Texas, and Texas Tech and Georgia. That game tonight between the hedges. LSU does not need to run a play.
three-fifths of Florida's points. Much more on that game in a minute. The other big one down in Austin, Lou Holtz takes Notre Dame down in Texas, tied at 17, third quarter. Texas doing it on the ground in the third quarter. Ricky Williams touchdown run, Makovic's team up 24-17. But after an interception on fourth and goal from the five, it's option, it's Audrey Denson, it's a tie game at 24. Irish driving after a poor shank punch left them in excellent field position. Ron Paulus hits the big pass to Malcolm Johnson in position for Jim Sanson. Lou Holt sends his kicker on out from 39 yards. Called this hit foul ball because he missed it straight and left and right in practice. Foul ball hit a home run and Notre Dame beat Texas 27-24. In the second half, James Brown, the Texas quarterback, just two of eight. Notre Dame's defense in the second half won this game for an emotional head coach. You have games like this, and this was just great for college football, regardless of who won. I'm talking about the excitement, the tickets, the enthusiasm, everybody talking about the electricity in the air. If a young parent brought their child to, to this game to see what college is all about, it's not for the select few. I just think that's what life's all about. So I hope that there'll be more games like this. I just hope I'm not coaching in them. And it gets bigger for Notre Dame next week, if that's possible. For more on the two big games of the day, to the side of one of them, Knoxville. Let's check in with Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreit. Mike, thank you. We'll talk more about that Irish Longhorn game in a second. Meanwhile, all the Tennessee fans that taunted you earlier today, Lee, they have gone home as the Gators go home with a very big victory. The Florida defense giving up a lot of yards, but perhaps the most hollow 492 yards passing in the history of the game. After the game, Steve Cyphers talked with one of the defensive heroes who was very verbal during the week, Tim Beauchamp, but he backed it up. Was there a time in the second half you thought the game might be in doubt? No, all we had to do was just go out and play, play hard, you know, shoot our offense with, with, um, while I'm struggling. So, so all we had to do was just go out and play. There were quotes that were attributed to you earlier in the week. You backed them up, I guess, huh? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> That's the darndest first quarter I've ever, I've ever been through, I've ever seen. And uh, kind of like the fourth quarter last year. Did this feel like the big game it was built up to be when you were on the field? It did there at the beginning, but uh, the 107,000, you know, hey, I don't know. I thought maybe some of them went home to watch the Jeff Foxworthy show or something. I guess Woo! when you win the ball game yeah. and you beat the just, team four years in a row, you can give a little parting shot on yeah. the way out of town. Significance of this game. Well, I, I think if you look at this, this is the first time Nebraska, or actually Florida, has been challenged since that Fiesta Bowl defeat against Nebraska. They proved today to the rest of the SEC they still are the reigning champs. They elevate their game. Their confidence is back up there after that big loss all the way back in the Fiesta Bowl. Well, the significance to me of this ball game is, first of all, you guys mark it down as September 21st. Unless Danny Werfel gets hurt, he won the Heisman in the first half of this ball game with those four touchdowns and the 35 points against the number two team in the nation. And number four, Florida, who was only behind 26 points in one poll and 17 points in the other to Florida State. They go to number two, Florida State moves number three, and Tennessee drops down. You've handed out the Heisman. That's right. Here's one. Mark it down. Don't forget Warwick Dunn. There's a lot, there's a lot of football to be played, Lee. Come on. Notre Dame and Texas. I thought we're going to see the first overtime game among big college teams, but Texas shanked that punt, so Holtz was able to go for the winning field goal in regulation. If they'd had a, a longer punt, perhaps he would have played a more conservative would have seen it overtime. Well, if you look at Notre Dame right now and look towards next week, the big showdown with Ohio State, an advantage for Notre Dame. They have been faced with adversity. Go back to the Vandy game. Vandy takes the lead in the fourth quarter. They counter it, come back, and win the game. Today, late again, Texas had a lead, and they came back. Ohio State has not been challenged. That may come into play in this game next week. Ohio State is so good, they might not even be challenged by Notre Dame. They're that good. But to see the whole thing is Rod Paulus. The Notre Dame quarterback came to the number one position today. He ran the option to the right, uh, the option to the left, threw the fourth down pass, threw a touchdown rollout. Ron Paulus is the key to Notre Dame and Ohio State game next week. I agree. All the Irish fans who criticized the use of the option, some of their biggest it's plays, absolutely. including that touchdown, came on the option. Now to the game we're watching, LSU and Auburn. Field goal misadventures. The two offside penalties by Auburn setting up the LSU touchdown and then the field goal block near the end of the half. And LSU is able to be very conservative with the lead now. Hey, the thing I can't believe is Houston, as bad as they are, scored 34 points against LSU and Auburn's got three. But I think Auburn will catch them up with the fast break offense. I think they'll finally wear down the LSU off defensive team and beat them. Well, I'm been surprised a little bit by how slow both offenses have gotten going. And you have to give credit to both sides of the defense. 
the second half will be determined who wins the, the turnover battle and also field position will be very key. All right, Mike has a lot more coming up at halftime. Alabama, speaking of the SEC, involved in a typical tie game with Arkansas. That's ahead as we continue.
$15,995, get the Skylark. Now, I really didn't have to shave. I just wanted to make a point. You'll save more at Capital Buick GMC. So get lucky today. Hey, what's up, man? Much to curb. Yeah, well, you're driving like my grandmother. Yeah, <laughs> you drink like mine. Yeah, give me a break, man.
Give your vehicle the classic touch at Classic Tin and Trim. We offer same-day service on most window tinting. Choose from pop-up or electric skylight sunroofs for cars and trucks. Classic Tin and Trim offers truck conversions, painted spoilers, fiberglass hard covers, and leather interior installation. We're your one-stop automotive accessory store with car alarms starting at $99.95. For quality, service, and selection at competitive prices, visit Classic Tin and Trim. So many people have been coming to Capital Buick's Close Shave Sale, I've decided to shave again. Price cut, just 21 full radiate for the Sabre. And for you truckers, just $15,995 for the GMC. Shave $5,000 off the Riviera. And for just $14,995, get the Skylark. Now, I really didn't have to shave. I just wanted to make a point. You'll save more at Capital Buick GMC. So get lucky today. I think a big part of what makes going to LSU so different is the uniqueness of Louisiana. People come to LSU from all over the world, and the atmosphere is a lot of it. The culture, traditions, the history, the whole Louisiana experience is right here. There's a Cajun word, lanyard, that means something extra, and I think that really describes LSU. LSU, as unique as Louisiana. Seven to three, our score at halftime. LSU on top, and Mike now it's been two and a half ball games since the Auburn Tigers have scored a touchdown on LSU. One of the reasons, their defense. Well, Carl Reese has called some blitzes in key situations, and Auburn just didn't pick them up. Okay, in the second half, they're lined up and set to go, so let's get it on. And this man right here is saying just that. I want to get it on with my offense, and let's get something in the end zone. As Auburn has been held out for two and a half ball games, and the LSU defense playing very sticky again here this evening.
top 25 teams in action tonight, including Iowa at Tulsa and in some trouble. Tulsa up top, John Fitzgerald, 51-yard passing catch with David Savage. It will set up a Reggie Williams touchdown run right now. Tulsa leads Iowa by three in the third. And in the Pac-10, Washington State pouring it on, leading Oregon by 24. You know, Mike, when you look around, the Western Athletic Conference has made a lot of noise during the first part of this 96 season.
the athletic ability of Demon Craig. He's able to get outside of him. Now that tackle's got to be made by Greg Hill. He's done well so far tonight, but he missed the tackle again. Good defensive call by Carl Reese. So Kate Pennington, number 40, comes in. A redshirt freshman out of Troy, Alabama. One thing you'd like to do when you have that run against you is like max protection. Use your, keep your backs in. Let, let a back pick him up. And then work your wide receivers versus man coverage. I would doubt that he comes here. Not bringing him again.
Morris Watts, the offensive coordinator at LSU, has a good rhythm tonight in his game plan. Throwing on first down, play action, safe throws, using Kevin Falk in the backfield a bunch, running the football. Just a nice design to the offense tonight.
losses to West Lafayette, West Virginia, and Purdue. A 3 nothing game until another one of those good young backs. Almost Saraway doesn't have 100 yards, but he has this big run helping West Virginia to a 10-0 lead over Purdue.
was Rayon Hill, who was injured and uh, got up and went off the field under his his own power. Uh, you've got you've got some toughies coming up. I mean, first of all, we had North Carolina against Syracuse, and then watched them today, yeah, and they pitched yeah. a shutout. But yeah. the young quarterbacks doing well for them. I believe they are for real. Their defense looks like they can keep any ball game. You know, so we're gonna have a hands full next week with them.
Suns team. LaFleur again. And the tight end will hurdle inside the 10. The ball came loose. But there has been no signal of change of possession. It is first and goal, LSU. Well, I can't say enough about Morris Watts, the offensive coordinator's design tonight. Because the misdirection, getting the ball to David LaFleur, he's got a he's slowing down that quick defense. Now all of a sudden, David LaFleur sneaks out in the flat, hurt Tyler right on the money to the big tight end, and Jason Bray with a tackle, but uh, LSU is on the move. And Auburn now, you've got to think, holding them to a field goal. Well, Tyler really keeping his poise.
and East Carolina gets it done. In the slot, in the slot, Marcus Crandall a couple of yards to Buck Collins. East Carolina beats South Carolina, both teams now 2-1. and one. In the SEC now at the half in Music City, it's Ole Miss, Tommy Tuberville, a contract extension this week. They lead Vandy by 7.
Flynn, but there will not be one as Foster was being protected by Houston. You know how you get in, in every game, you get so many plays you got to execute against blitzes, and that was one that Damian Craig did execute. Robert Baker did also. They blocked everything. They saw the, the strong safety coming. They had time to get rid of it. They just didn't get the points. Well, Mike, unless he was bobbling the football, I, I'm with you. And that's a bang-bang play and very close, but uh, it sure did look like he scored the touchdown. Well, it's yesterday's newspaper right <laughs> now, and uh, Jerry Bob needs his defense to stop so they can get the ball back again. And LSU wants to keep those sticks and time moving. Foster in motion. Foss, to me, has just been denied anything in the second half as Martavius Houston puts the hit on him. And you get playing a little more cautious now, and all of a sudden the safeties are up for Auburn also. Martavius Houston real close to the line of scrimmage making that tackle on Kevin Falk.
get something to ignite it and get your offense believing in you, and all of a sudden he's he's got a little bit of a hot hand right here. You know, Mike, the other thing about using that quarterback, the guy who signals in the plays and everything, he's in the ball game. His head's right there. You're right, man. He's thinking all the time, and he's thinking with the play calls of the coach.
Davis. He just did not get any height on it. Terry Bowden had to be thinking, finally, we got on the scoreboard as Kevin Vaught goes back deep. Along with Mealy. And the extra point is blocked. Casey Tabor on the return. Okay, let's go. Let's look at the extra point first.
Oh, you're welcome, Dad. Hey, oh, by the way, uh, you know where Keith's sitting? He's right over in the corner. All right, I got his stuff here, too. Couldn't hold on, 
Greg Hill has had a excellent night for LSU. Then Leonard Thompson trying to block him, and he's doing up and over him. We've got Greg Hill unofficially for eight tackles, and I don't know how many furries he has with all the blitzes tonight. Truly throws it complete to Baker, and that'll be good for the first down, and let's check in again with Kellen Winslow. Ron and Mike, a little interesting bit of uh, information about Rayon Hill, who made the interception and took it all the way back. Six months ago, he broke the tibia in his leg, the big bone, had a rod put in, still playing with the rod in his leg. Doesn't seem to be bothering me at all, does it? No, no. I tell you, he showed good speed getting in the end zone.
being aggressive and going after and trying to finish Auburn off right now. Just a deflected pass, Bray with the interception. And what Auburn has to do, Ron, is be patient here and take the little short throws. They've got 520 on the clock and three timeouts. They don't need to get it all back one time. Backs out of the backfield against the linebackers. Good matches for you.
want to make painting easier, change your roller to a Wagner cordless power roller. There's less mess, less hassle, and less bending over because you control the flow of paint. So you can just keep on rolling. In fact, with the power roller and its accessories, you'll get professional results nearly twice as fast. It even turns cleanup into an easy job. So get a cordless power roller from Wagner and transform every room in your house. Welcome back to Auburn, Alabama. Ron Franklin, along with Mike Godfrey and Helen Winslow. 17 to 9 LSU, 331 left to play. And Auburn has the football back, third and short.
Notre Dame, Texas. 
Texas of the Heisman Watch. And also we'll keep you up to date as to what's going on with number one Nebraska out of the desert tonight. They have uh, gotten a little sand kicked in their face early on by the Sun Devils of Arizona State. And what I was saying there, Ron, about the, uh, you know, quarterback is so important uh, not to say take anything away from Scott Frost because but the, the guy they lost under that center for uh, Nebraska uh, with Tommy Frazier was a great quarterback and did a lot of good things. Now Auburn is going to take the ball and move it to the hash, which means probably some type of pick play to the wide side of the field with their pass receivers. Three receivers obviously probably will line up to the field and you get some kind of pick play out there, Ron. Well, the two players that are going to the right, the wide side of the field, are 83 Tyrone Dixon and number 21 Robert Baker. Back to the short side, back into the boundary, is Carson Bailey. He's in the bottom of your screen. And you also got Rusty Williams, so he'll probably go in the flat. There's the snap.
join Mike Tirico for the Residence Inn College Football Scoreboard. Ron, Mike, and Kellen, thank you. What a tremendous game. And the interceptions which turned this game the other way a couple of years ago, this time turns it for the LSU Tigers who come up with a four-point win and it certainly helps their cause in the SEC 